Tennessee Death Row Dogs, your local dog rescue nonprofit. I'm Jeff Cornwall, and this is The Entrepreneurial Mind. Today, my guest is John Chadwick of Claritas Capital. We'll be back to talk with him after this break. Well, John, welcome. Thanks yeah, for coming thank in today. You. Yeah, thank you very much for including me. So, so talk a little bit about how you guys are positioned in the equity market uh, here in Nashville. Uh, you, you primarily are doing healthcare. Is that correct? Well, uh, we we actually do healthcare and technology and business services. Okay. So, if you kind of go back to when we started in two thousand two, we've made forty one investments since that time, and about you know half are here in Nashville, half right. half are elsewhere. And then they're, they're how far free. elsewhere do you go with your deals? So we'll, we'll have we have companies in Houston, we have companies in Atlanta, uh, Cincinnati, and, and a lot of it stems from a relationship that we've had in the past uh, since we've been in the typically with for a while. Uh, with one of the, the principals, or is it with another it, venture firm? No, no, it's really off of the relationships that we have coming off of you know let's say Don and Teresa and Fisher were at. Uh, Bob Fisher were at Massey Birch, and I was at right, Richland. Right. So if you kind of take a look at that network of relationships, there were over 130 companies, and they were, while they were in Nashville, they were also spread out throughout the country. Right. So we have a number of entrepreneurs that we worked with that have recycled. You know, so we have a team in Houston we've worked with twice, but one time when I was at Richland, and one time here at uh, Claritas. Yeah, you guys yeah. will ride the same jockey more than once. If we, we, well. we were talking about David earlier, Mason, yeah. right? We right. we like those situations quite a bit in terms of t you know, working with a quality entrepreneur, right? You know, and if you kind of go you know into like the payment space, uh, Massey Birch back Greg Daly at PMT, right? We invested with Greg at, when he had iPayment, right? Back in two thousand three time period, two thousand two, two thousand three time period. Now, if I <clears throat> remember correctly, correctly from reading your bio, you're on, on four of the boards for your in portfolio companies right now. Is that correct? Yeah, it's probably, probably one or two more, yeah. so One or two yeah. more? Yeah, okay. so, so I'm, I'm on Empyrean. <clears throat> I'm on the board of Empyrean. I'm on the board of ShareCare, the board of Blue Chip Surgical. So those are three health deals, right? Yeah, most of those are healthcare names. And then uh, Studio One. And Studio Now, yeah. Or Studio Now, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Channel, Wait. what is it? Which one was was share care on the healthcare side? We no, have no. It's a, the the telecom company. Chat. Well, Continuum. We have a Continuum, okay. which is a spectrum play that we have. Okay. I'm on Talk that. about that one a little bit. That's interesting. That's kind of different than a lot of the other things you're doing. Yeah. So what we did in there's a there's a team that had sold a business to Tritel uh, back in, or it had a company called Tritel. They sold it to AT and T Wireless, uh, and very talented uh, uh, internet, uh, very talented telecom entrepreneurs. A guy named Billy Munger is really the lead lead player out of uh, out of Jackson, Mississippi. He's actually a Vanderbilt grad, so he's got a Nashville root to him. Clark Akers, do you know Clark at all? Yep. Clark's affiliated with the business as well. Right. Uh, so uh, they bought when there was a 700 me uh, megahertz spectrum au auction. Uh, we partnered with them along with uh, a couple other investment firms to buy spectrum based on. Really, the fundamental premise that you're going to have more and more demands on the spectrum, you know, uh, and, and since the, we've made that investment, you've had mobile expo explosion, and you pretty much uh, have played out that there's a big need for that spectrum. So we feel we're pretty well positioned with it. There's no operating risk, so it's purely a kind of a raw land play in, right. in effect. Right. Uh, and we own ten markets uh, around the around the country. Um. Let's talk a little bit, of, shift gears a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about the state of uh, the venture capital industry in general, kind of where things are. Um, you know, it was a tough couple of years mm -hmm. coming out of 08, uh, but some of the things I've been reading lately sounds like it's starting to kind of get restabilized a bit now and deal flow has improved a bit. Is that kind of what you're seeing? Yeah. Not I, just with you guys, but, but kind of in the industry. Yeah, from a macro standpoint, if you, I mean, if you look at, 2001 and two, you had the nuclear winter. Right, right. right. So you had right. kind of a complete <clears throat> demise of the of the industry. And that yeah, was, those are tough years. Yeah, for those a lot very of us. tough yeah. years. Yeah. They were tough in really the coast, and they were tough in this region right. for the country. Um, and then if you take a look at some of the 2008 and nine time period, were kind of difficult ones in terms of a lot of investors didn't want to deploy money into the venture capital space. Just like same with the private equity and the buyout space. Really, clients were trying to hold back their money until they figured out what the level of 
uh, you know, what the bottoms were uh, and what kind of liquidity they needed. So right. every kind of commitment was, was, was slow walked during that time period. And that trickled down to you know, the amount of activity that was going on in the company. So on our, our most active year was 2006, we made six investments. On average, we do three. In 2009, we did one. So it just was a, was a you know, you, you wanted to do things, but you just had to balance your own capital and, and your client's access to capital. Three investments period. seems to be kind of the magic number for, from your size, it seems like. I mean, it... Um, we did you know, three last year. Yeah. You know. um, and that surprises a lot of people. Uh, mm -hmm. who, who aren't familiar right. intimately with, with how this works. Um, can you talk a little bit about sort of the, the deal flow that a typical VC firm will see? Uh, you mm -hmm. know, how, many, how many deals do you look at seriously? How many come over the transom? And how do you get down to those three that you invest in? Yeah, yeah so, so our, our business is not, we're not really a volume business, so we can do our part in terms of you know, a couple investments a year um, but we're, we're not in and of ourselves a solution to helping to fund you know, 10, 20 right. different companies. I think Bertram and the EC do a great job of trying to kind of cover more of a volume right. approach and touch a lot of parties right. in a little bit. And then some of the, you know, the, you know, some of the incubators do uh, the same. Uh, but for our firm, we really focus in on a, a relationship that one of us has or several of us within the firm have with a entrepreneur or a, or a CEO of a company, help that person try to solve a problem. And that could be an existing company that he's trying to start or she's trying to start. It could be a business that they're trying to buy. That could be a shareholder they're trying to buy out. And we try to really look at it as what's the problem we can help solve? You know, what does that mean from uh, for us, for our clients? What kind of structure do we need to Put to bear, so, so it's really kind of very customized approach to how we work with the client. You know, how we so work you don't with do a lot of prospecting like some, <clears throat> especially East Coast VC firms tend to do. Yeah, so well, I mean, it, it's a different. I mean, there's some firms that are really trying to deploy, uh, you know, five, ten, twenty investments a year. Right. So to do that, they need, you know, really business development functions, uh, and and that's certainly there's nothing wrong with that approach. That works very well for some very large firms. For us. We've really taken the approach of more. How, how do we leverage our own our own network that we have, our own set of relationships, and and the access that we have from time to time on some very interesting situations, interesting companies, uh, and then structure it in a manner that's very customized. So, you know, like when we did the buyback of Studio Now, and that's not really a venture deal. I mean, people right. are not cite that, not that thing. Kind it's of not deal. a traditional venture deal. Right. It's too small for the, the, the buyout groups and the middle market private equity firms. But for us, we were very interested in working with you know, Mason right. and Quartz and his team again, uh, or their team again. Right. Um, so, so we were very happy about pulling that off. It was a smart know. deal. Yeah, that worked out. It was that, a smart deal. That worked out well. So, uh, One last question. Uh, kind of talk about the state of uh, the equity marketplace here in Nashville. Uh, you know, it's, mm -hmm. There have been some people kind of grumbling about <clears throat> it's a little bit too narrow and uh, we need to diversify and, and grow that base. Narrow from an industry standpoint? or, or from Yeah, a, I think from an yeah. industry standpoint. Um, you know, from where I sit, I think, I think I've seen some real positive growth in the last couple of years mm -hmm. and, and, and more diversification. Is that kind of what you're seeing as well? Yeah, I, I'm a, I, I mean, Nashville's best, I mean, in terms of it, from a national perspective, I think Nashville's strongest asset is its entrepreneurial community, very tailored towards healthcare. Right. And it starts with healthcare services, then it bleeds into healthcare technology. Right. And there are plays that you can kind of do, like we have Entrada, which is a healthcare technology company that's worked right. out, is working out very well. And so you can kind of you can you can leverage those skill sets uh, and attract capital from all over the country for those types of businesses. There's very good payments, so like Edo has attracted capital from Vantage Point and right. uh, uh, Baird and other parties locally here too. Uh, and there's a very good payment base in Nashville. There's a very good payment base in Tennessee. Uh, technology, I mean, I think there's a the, lot the, of interesting tech. Healthcare yeah, there's, tech there's, companies. A, there's a lot of very good tech, healthcare really tech, and I think ones. that's that lends itself well towards tech talent, which lends itself well towards non-healthcare technology. And yeah. you take a look at the the music business, you take a look at the entertainment business, you take a look, say, whether, you know, Studio Now is kind of in that space, 
you know, uh, Mark Montgomery over at Flows thinking right. a lot about how do you get things done. Right. You know, the EC has specific efforts outside of just healthcare. So, so I think the ingredients are pretty favorable yeah. uh, for it. I and think we've fared pretty well through this, yeah, this, and this particular great, dark winter. It's a great market. I mean, it's a great <coughs> I mean, it's gotten a little bit more difficult too with the fact that, I mean, we've lost We've lost the the IPO as an exit strategy, basically, for a lot of these deals, and so. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it came back a little bit if you were in a certain certain sector or too late. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> a sliver. But yeah. the nice part, I mean, people are getting exits off. I mean, off of. But sales you guys have companies. adapted to that, and, and mm -hmm. it's been, uh, you know, it, I think it hit harder in yeah. other markets. So. But see, uh, Nashville's still looking for its its billion dollar technology success story. Right. You know, and so that I think that's going to be a, a a moment. We'll. I think we'll eventually get there. It's coming. And then when that happens, hopefully those entrepreneurs that have done well, you know, then in turn stay here and start other companies. Right. And it's kind of the HCA effect on the That's healthcare right. side. It, 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 it's a long play, though. It yeah. just takes some time. So, John, thank yeah. you so much for coming Thank you very in. much. I yeah. appreciate your time. Yeah. Good to talk with you again. Take care.